Yo, what up guys? It's Jay from TV Time with Jay and I am back once again with another review for you guys and this time I am here to review the two hour series premiere for This Is Us Season 5. 40 parts 1 and 2. Now as per usual in my episode reviews, I'll be recapping the events of the episodes and then going over my thoughts and feels about the different plot points all throughout. So if you haven't seen the episodes yet, do yourself a favor, watch the episodes first, then come back here and tell me your thoughts and feels in the comments down below because I will be going into spoiler territory. You have been warned. Okay, so I covered This Is Us Season 4 last year on my original channel, uh, Mr. J's Reviews. However, unfortunately, that channel was terminated, so I can't really just point you guys to my previous videos about it. But, long story short, I love This Is Us. It's one of my favorite TV shows out currently. Uh, the drama is amazing. It is super well acted. It's funny. It makes you feel good. It makes you cry. All the things. It hits all the emotional beats that you look for in a great TV show. And man, the character writing is absolutely spectacular. Um, so, season four was definitely a return to form for me. You know, I really, really loved the first season. Honestly, the first season of This Is Us is one of the strongest, you know, first seasons on TV that I've seen, uh, you know, within the 2010s, for sure. And it's definitely up there. It has one of the best pilots, just in general that I've seen in a long time. I absolutely love this show. Season two was pretty solid. Three, it started to fall off a little bit for me, but season four was definitely a return to form. Uh, it was all great. We addressed some really interesting, you know, character developments and issues with characters and between characters, and we got to see some significant growth. Uh, my favorite characters have changed uh, repeatedly all throughout the course of the show. I used to not like Kate as much, but now I absolutely love Kate. Kate, honestly, um, you know, reminds me a bit of my own mom because, uh, you know, if you guys don't already know, uh, if you're you know, new here, this is your first video of mine seeing. First off, hi, welcome. Uh, I was born with cerebral palsy. And, um, and so, you know, my mom and dad, you know, both had to, you know, raise a disabled child. And so, you know, what Kate's going through uh, in season four and all of that, I was really interested in and I was really invested in. Because obviously, you know, I was a kid. I was the one being raised. I didn't really, you know, watch what my parents did. You know, of course, I'm grateful to them because, you know, without them raising me the way they did, I wouldn't be the person I am today. And I'm always going to be grateful for that. Uh, but seeing kind of, you know, just the struggles, the stress, the turmoil that Kate and Toby went through, it's really interesting. It kind of makes me like reflective and it's like, man, I wonder, did my parents feel this way? Like with me growing up? Because, you know, back then, 20 years ago, you know, there wasn't really much information on cerebral palsy, not, not nearly as much as there is now. So they kind of like, you know, no pun intended for uh, Kate's case, uh, went in blind. And uh, so I was super interested in that. Kevin as a character, I used to not like at all because he was kind of just this arrogant, pretty boy asshole, right? Not an asshole per se, because, you know, he was always a good guy deep down, but he had like that bit of an asshole streak, but Kevin, he, after hitting his rock bottom, he really matured and grew as a person, and he really grew into more of a Jack-like character, um, you know, which is something that you always expected to be, like, where Randall was at, right? But instead, we find out that Randall you know, he has his own flaws. He's not as perfect and awesome as we thought he was in the beginning. You know, Randall himself is constantly struggling with mental health issues, which, you know, there's nothing wrong with. Obviously, mental health upkeep is super important. And, uh, you know, all throughout his life, he's had some things that he's kind of had to keep to himself just so that he doesn't seem ungrateful or, you know, disrespectful towards his family. Because, of course, you know, given the circumstances he was in, he is always going to be grateful to his family, but there's always going to be things that he just feels like he can't talk to them about. And so keeping all those things bottled up inside, it, you know, finally has come to a turning point. And uh, this is where we are in season five, 
right? So this first episode of season five was like really, really relevant. I honestly, you know, this is one of the first shows back on TV now, you know, post, well, not even post, we're still in the middle of it, but uh, during the pandemic, this is the first, you know, big show to really make its return. And I got to say, they really did implement, you know, coronavirus, all the COVID-19, like, scares, precautions, fears. They implemented it really well. It didn't really seem forced. It felt very natural. Same thing with all the events, you know, including the, you know, George Floyd and all the protests and stuff. And this is where, of course, Randall's own issues come into play. Now, I've given Randall a hard time uh, in season four because I feel like Randall, you know, it's, it's shown more of his, like, controlling side, his need to, you know, be in charge of everything, to run everything. Uh, but, you kind of see where this comes from, right? Is because like he has had no control his entire life. You know, he didn't get to decide anything. He was thrown into situation after situation and just has had to make do with his circumstances. And he's obviously made the best out of them. But because of this, he always feels the need to control the situation when he can to make sure things don't get out of hand. And, of course, you know, uh, it applies to Rebecca, to his siblings, and all that other stuff. And it's, you know, definitely negative, it negatively impacted his family. Um, and, of course, his relationship with Kevin and Kate. Um, and I gotta say, man, both his conversation with Malik and his one with Kate were really well done. Sterling K. Brown is a phenomenal actor, as always. But man, that conversation with Kate, that really hit home. I mean, obviously he wasn't doing it to hurt her feelings or anything, but you know, you could tell that it was something serious. He really did feel this way. Um, and just the delivery from Sterling was absolutely amazing. So also, I wanna talk about the flashbacks because uh, in this episode, you know, as per this is a tradition, the first episode of the season always takes place on the big three's birthday and this is of course their 40th birthday and in the flashback not only do we get to see jack and rebecca but we get to see young william once again and we get to see william's wife and randall's mother laurel and we get to see more of her and what she was like and we get to see how much of a dreamer she was how you know she wanted to help people and you know fight for you know, equal rights and, you know, fair treatment. They, you know, their friend got thrown into jail for protesting and all this other stuff and how she wanted to give Randall a better life. But due to all the stress and the circumstances they're in, you know, they both fell into drugs. And, you know, for a long time, you know, because we've only heard things from William's perspective, we thought that Laurel died because and we do actually see that happen and we find out something really interesting. Kendall, Kate, and Kevin were not born on the same day. And we find out that Randall's actually a day older than Kate and Kevin. And the day Randall was born, which was actually in William and Laurel's apartment, his mom decided to, you know, take one last hit to numb the pain because she was in a lot of pain, obviously, post-childbirth. And, you know, William thought she OD'd. And, of course, the paramedics were about to call it and they were about to call, you know, the cops and child services. So, William, you know, not wanting his baby to be tossed into the system. And, you know, obviously, he didn't want to go to jail either. So, he booked it. And we know the rest of the story. He went to the fire station. But we also get to see that, obviously, you know, both he and Jack that very same day, had a bit of a crisis of faith. You know, he, you know, prayed to God and he was like, please, please, I can't take care of this baby alone. I can't do this by myself. Please, I need you to look out for him. I need you to take care of him. And, you know, Jack, we actually find out that, you know, his father constantly prayed when they went to church. And Jack always wondered, you know, what was he praying for? What was he praying for? And so, now, on the day his kids were born, he calls up his dad, and he asks him, he's like, Pop, what were you praying for? And his dad answers, he goes, I prayed that my kids would turn out better than I did. 
And, you know, Jack is like, I'm trying, Pop. And he doesn't even tell him that, yeah, you know, I'm having kids of my own today, too. Your grandkids were just born. That's how strained his relationship with his father was. Now, if you've been watching the show, you know exactly why. Because his dad was an alcoholic, abusive asshole. So, you know, his dad honestly doesn't deserve uh, to meet these kids. Or, like, get to know them at all. Because, you know, he kind of showed Jack how much he means to him. So, Jack, you know, to his credit, worked his ass off to not only be a better man and a better father, but one of the best fathers, like, on TV in general. Just, oh my god, he is amazing. Um, And we kind of see that, right? Um, That kind of panicked urgency. We see it in Kevin and Madison, and it is so fucking cute. I love seeing Kevin and Madison kind of mirror a young Rebecca and Jack. And, you know, Kevin's anxious... Nervous energy, but obviously his unending positivity and optimism that he got from his dad. And after, you know, working past his own demons very much like Jack did after the war. And it's really, really, really well done. And I cannot wait to see, uh, you know, their journey through parenthood and, you know, raising the twins. Um, As a twin myself, I'm really (laughs) just interested to see, uh, like, what this dynamic is going to be like. Of course, I'm super happy that Kate wasn't angry or upset about it. That would have been really annoying. Um, I, I just want, you know, Randall and Kev to be okay. It seems like they're okay by that time of the flash forward, but that looks like at least, like, ten or so years after present day so um you know i'm hoping that's resolved sooner um also we get to see you know the little girl that kate and toby are going to adopt that we see the future version of in the flash forward as well when jack has his kid so that's pretty awesome i can't wait to see more of that um the next episode is going to be in two weeks i'm going to be covering every single episode of this is us as they come out so uh if you like what i do here and you want to see more from me and you want to hear me you know break down these episodes gush about my feelings about the episodes talk about and yell at certain characters also really quick i want to mention uh like that both miguel and toby shouted out the uh one day at a time reboot uh which is honestly one of my favorite sitcoms of the past decade um i really really hope it does not get canceled uh, it's not looking good for odette but i have faith and hope that you know maybe even with this little boost that you know cbs will realize you know what a gem they have on their hands uh but yeah so uh let me know what you guys thought about this episode in the comments down below which storyline are you looking forward to the most uh you know what was your reaction to the ending i didn't even talk about the ending really quick let me talk about the ending it turns out that the paramedics were actually able to save laurel so randall's biological mother is still alive holy crap she's still alive i cannot believe that i was so shook my mind was blown so many thoughts are running through my head uh which a uh, storyline are you looking forward to seeing the most obviously besides you know interacting with randall's biological mother and whose storyline do you uh want to see the most and are invested in the most for me it's definitely kevin and madison um followed closely by kate as well kate and toby uh but let me know what you guys thought about it in the comments down below as always don't forget to leave this video a like to let me know you enjoyed it and if you like what i do here and you want to see more from me be sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you get notified every time i upload a new video in the outro card i will leave linked a video youtube's mysterious algorithm things you might like as well as you know one of my more recent uploads so you can get a feel for what I have to offer here on the channel. But I will see you guys in two weeks for the next This Is Us review. Until then, I'll catch you later. Peace.